There it is. What's up guys, if you'd like to support our content and pick up this month's amazing proxy rewards, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash it resolves. What's going on everybody and welcome back to another gameplay video. Today we are jumping back into historic with a five color reanimator list. Before we jump into talking about this list, I just want to allow or let you all know uh, we do have our Modern Horizons 2 giveaway still going on until the end of the week. If you'd like to enter, there are five ways to do so. Check out our website, itresolvesmtg.com. We have got an article there where you can get all the links to everywhere that you need to go. They're also down in the description if you would like to check those out. But without further ado, guys, let's talk about this list. First and foremost, I did not create this list. I found uh, this one on Aetherhub. Uh, unfortunately, I do not remember who posted it, but uh, it is a really cool list. I was looking for a reanimator list and this one really caught my eye. Uh, having tested it once or twice since then, I really, really like it. Uh, I, I like it a lot. Obviously, this is based on the Unburial Rites, uh, kind of Mizzix Mastery, and then Rise of the Dark Realms. So the idea is to get one of those cards into your graveyard uh, and then theoretically be able to go crazy either with the Mizzix Mastery uh, and, and basically overload it and do a ton of stuff, or Unburial Rites, Rise of the Dark Realms, and be able to pull all of these creatures out uh, and do some crazy stuff. Uh, Emergent Ultimatum also works quite well. So... Uh, Scholar of the Lost Trove is really a key card here. The idea is to get this into your graveyard and then pull it back with that on burial rights. That's going to trigger, uh, basically you, you get to copy any instant or sorcery or cast any instant or sorcery in your graveyard. The idea is really to hit that rise of the dark realm so you can get all the other creatures back and then really start to take over the game. Uh, we've got some really big things, obviously Elish Norn, Shieldred. Uh, we have got Platinum Angel as a way to kind of keep us from losing the game almost no matter what. Vorinclex and then of course Jin Gitaxis uh, as well as Urbrass so basically this gives haste to everything which just makes it a uh, very very quick game if we can get that Rise of the Dark Realms off. Obviously to help us get there we do have a lot of self mill so we've got Stitcher Supplier, Faithless Looting, Cathartic Reunion as a one of and then four Grizzly Salvage. Uh, we also have Wither Bloom Command, which we can use to mill three cards, then return a land from our graveyard to our hand, uh, which is really, really helpful because obviously we really need to get to four mana and have at least one of that to be white uh, is really the key. So overall, it's a pretty straightforward list. It's a very basic uh, list, but it does work, uh, in my opinion, exceptionally well. And so with that in mind, we are going to send this through three best of one games, see how we do. Uh, and by the end, we'll, we'll have an, a more informed opinion on the list but without further ado guys let's go ahead and jump into game one all right guys here we are for game number one and uh yeah i think this is a pretty easy keep actually with the witherbloom command in particular uh, as well as that turn one stitcher supplier this just seems like a perfect hand we do have the unburial rights we do need to get some more lands obviously that's kind of a big one for us but we do get that turn one supplier down which is nice i think uh grizzly salvage is also quite good let's go ahead and mill a few cards here uh, and see what we get. Uh, hopefully we can get like Rise of the Dark Realms. Ooh, that's perfect. Uh, so Scholar of the Lost Trove is exceptional. That is the card we want. Uh, crucially, what we have to be worried about are like rest in pieces, things like that. Anything that has that white, we do have to worry about that. So we will see. Uh, interesting. Okay. Uh, cool. Um, so as much as I don't particularly want to do this, um, I think we just have to. Uh, let's see very quickly, what lands do we have in the graveyard? I'm going to Grizzly Salvage. We could do this at instant speed, worth noting, but uh, we're going to choose to do it now. And I am going to take the pathway land here. We do want to make sure we have white available to us. Uh, and so I'm going to attack in, see what they do. Chances are they will not block. Sure. Um, but this gives us white for that Unburial Rites. Uh, we do have then Wither Bloom Command to pull back that Blood Crypt to give us that fourth land, which also is a red land, which we can use to get Faithless Looting out uh, as well. So uh, potentially could have done that in a different order and might have been slightly better, but uh, I think we'll be okay here. Um, as long as we don't like immediately lose, we're, we're okay. Okay, that's actually great. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do this. Uh, and we're going to discard Vorinclex as well as Unburial Rites uh, and get both of those in the graveyard. Uh, no attacks, obviously. 
Uh, so what is the best thing we can get here? We actually don't have a whole lot of really good stuff. I mean, we've got some good cards, don't get me wrong, but we don't have uh, like Rise of the Dark Realms or anything like that in the graveyard. Uh, we maybe should have, we should have probably ditched the Emergent Ultimatum uh, instead of the Voring Clex, uh, because we did already have, you know, the, the Scholar in there. So I think that would have been a better option. Um, so definitely a mistake on my end, but we'll see what we can do here. We do, I mean, they're gonna attack in, I imagine, uh, and I'm all too happy to block here. So that works perfectly in my opinion. Uh, and that will give us three more cards into the bin, uh, theoretically. So let's see. Uh, let's see what we get. Okay, uh, well, that's very good. Um, <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, let's go ahead and what do we need to pull back here? Uh, let's do, um, let's play on burial rights. Um, do we have any major instants or sorceries? Not really, not really. Um, I mean, Elish Norn's not bad. We could also just get Platinum Angel, uh, which would make it very difficult for us to lose. But if they just had any removal and they do have black, uh, then that's not the end of the world. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's just see what happens. Uh, this gives us... Oh, yeah, this allows us to pull this out. Duh. Uh, so this does pull artifacts as well. Um, definitely didn't uh, think about that interaction. So that's actually really nice. Uh, it just provides us with not only two very good flying threats, but also uh, a very difficult way for them to kind of win the game here. Um... So what is the next game plan is essentially the question here. Uh, and it might just be to Faithless Looting. Um, it's not a super exciting play, I get that, but uh, it does give us hopefully some more stuff to pitch, which is great. Uh, yeah, both of those are very, very good. Uh, and then we can actually play Wither Bloom Command, um, which I think we will do. Uh, let's see. Let's see, really quickly. Is there anything we just want to kill? Uh, yeah, it might actually be this cat. <laughs> uh, it's kind of silly, but I do think it's the cat. Uh, we'll mill and then we'll kill the cat. Just gets rid of this trample, uh, which is he very, very important, I will say. Uh, and we do want to get red here because we can Mizzix Mastery and Overload, uh, which is obviously quite good. Um, I am going to attack in because at some point we do want to try and win the game uh, and that's going to help us get there obviously. We've got 9 power on the field with 10 power or 10 life on the opponent's side so the trick is we want to get this clock done as quickly as possible. Uh, if they don't have uh, a way to kill the Platinum Angel then we're actually in really great shape here. They can attack all they want uh, but we can't lose the game. Uh, we are in negative four life. That's something I've never seen before. Uh, funny enough, <laughs> that's kind of cool. Um, all right, so we need to get more lands down. Uh, I guess we can. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, we can Mizzix Mastery uh, and go ahead and play the Emergent Ultimatum. Just do it for one. Uh, so we don't have to copy it. We just get to play the Emergent Ultimatum, uh, which is really good uh, and should be able to potentially finish the game. We'll see. Uh, so we do want this. We do want this. And probably this, we'll say. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I mean, either way, we're we're kind of in OK shape here because we should be able to pull Elishnorn, which is going to pump up our team uh, and then get them dead. Uh, is essentially the idea here, so I think we'll be okay uh, because Unburial Rites plus Elish Norn, just because we have one in the graveyard already, just kind of guarantees us that we're able to get those down. Uh, we'll go ahead and do this. Let's get Elish Norn. Uh, that's going to kill this uh, and pump up our team. That also gives us Scholar, uh, which means we can Unburial Rites again. Uh, and pull, I don't know, what do you want to pull? Let's pull Shieldred, because why not? 
Uh, and then we just get to attack in. We could have gotten Urbrask, or, nah, did we have Urbrask in the graveyard? We did. We could have gotten Urbrask and then given everything haste, but we didn't need to. So that's game one, guys. We got the win. Let's go ahead and jump into game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two, and, uh, this is an interesting hand. We're gonna try it. Uh, it's a little weird, obviously. Um, we've got a lot of cards we'd like to discard, but we do have very good mana starting off, at least, so I'm gonna try and keep this. Let's go ahead and Stitcher Supplier. Uh, they are gonna gain a life naturally, but this is gonna mill a few cards. Ooh, and Elish Norn is about as perfect as we could hope for. Uh, against a deck like this, I think Elish Norn is really gonna be one of the key cards that we can get. It's just gonna be able to sweep a lot of what they are doing. Um, it may not be perfect, but like these Soul Wardens and things like that, it's gonna take those down, uh, which is fantastic. So um, let's go ahead, we will throw this out there and i think we just play another stitcher supplier um they're obviously going to gain some life off of this and that is not good but it should be okay long term for us uh because again we're we're getting i mean two lands away from that unburial rights uh and we do have a faithless looting in our hand essentially so next turn we should be able to just faithless looting kind of take this down um hopefully <laughs> Hopefully, that's the key. Uh, so let's go ahead and Faithless Looting now. Um, and wow, no lands. That's a little scary, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, that's that's pretty scary. Uh, but we can get rid of this Platinum Angel. Uh, that's gonna give us a little help, I believe. Um, and we do have the Witherbloom Command. So worth noting that with that Witherbloom Command, it does give us the guaranteed fourth land it just would be so much better if we could just draw it <laughs> uh that's kind of the takeaway um but that's okay we we might be able to get there so we'll we'll see um i do have a curious interaction i'd be interested to know how uh the the trove plus that uh the uh oh my gosh mizzix mastery thing goes that'd be kind of interesting but we're gonna do this first obviously uh wow okay so let's discard definitely on burial rights uh and probably jenga taxes um all of these are obviously good options um all right so we're gonna do this we're gonna mill three and grab a land and then we're gonna kill uh one of these little guys here um perfect so Got plenty of lands here. Let's pull back that stomping ground. We do want to get red uh, as best we can um, for the the Mizzix Mastery in our hand. Uh, we do need to have a lot of red for that to really go off. But truthfully, um, if we just have a really good instant or sorcery in the graveyard, like Emergent Ultimatum, we can usually do pretty well. Um, all right, so the question becomes, do we just use Mizzix Mastery? And I think the answer is actually yes. Uh, because um, we get to Emergent Ultimatum here, uh, which is extraordinarily good, uh, to be brutally honest. Um, and here's the trick. If we get Scholar plus... Uh, if we get a Scholar plus Rise of the Dark Realms, we are golden, uh, because there's not a whole lot they can do about that. <laughs> that guarantees us that we're able to kind of play it, so we're going to do the best we can. Uh, and make that happen. So we do want Rise, we do want this, uh, and um, let's just get, uh, I guess, Unburial Rites? I guess. I don't, I don't, I truthfully don't know what that third card needs to be, um, but either way, this is, like, a very, very good, um, way to do this, so we will see we will see um oh they do get exiled so i guess we don't get to play the rise of the dark realms uh maybe not but that's okay uh honestly we've got scholar we've also got on burial rights so we're gonna get some really really good stuff here regardless uh which is the great thing about emergent ultimatum obviously uh let's do this and then this so we're gonna pull out um hmm, might just be platinum angel or no. Yeah, I think it's going to be Elish Norn, actually. It's going to kill the Soul Warden. Uh, Vito is also going to get a lot less impactful. We do lose a life, obviously. And they could probably kill Elish Norn, but maybe not. Um, and let's... Let's pull Platinum Angel. 
uh, and see what happens. Uh, may not work, but now we've also just got multiple unburial rights, so even if they kill anything, <laughs> we've just got ways to kind of deal with it. Um, so theoretically, we should be in okay shape. They may have some kind of sweeper. That is something we could foresee coming along, um, in which case that kind of sucks because if it's like settle the wreckage as an example, it does exile these, uh, which could be a problem, which might mean we just don't attack with Platinum Angel because um, that's kind of the one card we don't want to lose uh, given how much time that that provides us. Uh, but yeah, that's not going to do it. Okay, that's great. Uh, honestly, that's fan fantastic. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's get Jenga Taxis. Uh, let's attack in. Um, I'm happy to attack in now because obviously they don't have the, uh, oh wow. Uh, they obviously do not have the, uh, the, whatchamacallit. Why can't I think of the name of that? Um, Scholar, there's Rise. Okay. Uh, let's get Emergent in Elish Norn. Okay. Uh, they obviously don't have the settle, so they would have very easily left that up there uh, and they didn't have it uh worth noting though the heliod's intervention is a bit scary because they can use it to kill platinum angel kind of curious as to why they didn't uh to be honest um it's very very interesting they may have another one worth noting uh but we are going to discard their hands uh at the end of the the turn here so like this has to be the turn they win essentially and i really doubt they can that dies immediately. Kind of helpful to have Elish Norn out on the field. Uh, okay, there's the Banishing Light, so they can get rid of Platinum Angel. Um, which, they're going for Jenga Taxus? It kind of has to be Platinum Angel, otherwise they just can't win. Um, sure. I mean, it's great. Very good. Um, but we're still... Yep, there it is. We got the win, guys. So that's two wins in a row. Let's go ahead and jump into game three and see how we do there. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. And uh, yeah, this is a pretty good hand. I mean, it's not perfect, but it does give us the, the turn one supplier, turn two faithless looting, or wither bloom command, uh, depending on how we want to, uh, to sequence this. So yeah, I think this is a pretty easy keep. We can blooming marsh on turn one, make sure it comes into play untapped, which is great um yeah i think this is a really solid start to be honest uh we'll see what the opponent wants to do so far guys we are two and oh which is pretty astounding for a graveyard deck like this uh like this is a fairly reliable way of uh of pulling out some of these really big creatures we haven't had many issues with doing so so i i'm liking this deck a lot uh we'll we'll talk more about that in the summary but it just seems to to really do basically exactly what you wanted to do for a reanimator list which is great um and it seems to work pretty well uh on the ladder i mean it's not perfect obviously no deck is but like it's not bad uh at all is the way that i'm looking at it uh so i'm interested to gauge your thoughts when we uh when we post this one up we'll see what you guys think uh also guys just a quick reminder uh we do have our challenge week going on right now if you don't know what that is please check out yesterday's video uh we kicked off emblem week with a really really sweet deck from death's ace which is a user in our discord uh put together a really fantastic deck uh and we we actually did really well with it in game two and got a very solid benchmark for the rest of challenge week it's a very fun time. It basically puts you guys against each other a little bit uh, and in a very friendly competition kind of way. And so, oh, that's perfect. Um, and so it basically allows us to, to use your decks against each other. We pick three of the submissions with a challenge in our head. Uh, and this week's is to create as many Planeswalker emblems as possible. Uh, and so we got to 13 with Death's Ace in one game, which is pretty, that's pretty sick. Like that's spectacular. Uh, and so he did a really, really sick job. Um, so anyway, definitely worth looking into if you guys are interested, please check that out. Uh, okay. Um, interesting. So, uh, I'm going to do this. Uh, no attacks I actually meant to have that come into play untapped bit of a mistake on my end but that's fine um next turn we can actually temple garden plus and then wither bloom command slash faithless looting i kind of want to make sure we can kill something with wither bloom command uh and as it stands we currently cannot um so we'll see 
we'll see. I mean, this is a an interesting list. I don't know if this is like the Simic Flash list and this just happens to be kind of a ramper in here. Okay, no, probably not then. Um, very interesting. We'll we'll see. We will see. Uh, let's do this. We'll pay two here. Um, I'm gonna faithless looting first, for obvious reasons. We're gonna scholar, and I think we shieldred. Is that correct? Um, I think that's correct. And then we'll just wither bloom command here. So we're gonna mill three, and I guess we'll just do this. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa! Cancel, cancel, cancel. Ooh, that was scary. Uh, we'll do this. Targeted opponent, you. All right. So we get to mill three and then pull a land back. Uh, I think it's just going to be that pathway land. That's just a safe bet, um, and we'll pass. That life gain's not amazing, uh, but it does provide us with just a little bit more longevity. Uh, they're dealing two a turn, so we essentially blanked uh, one of these guys, which is something. Um, but next turn, we do get Unburial Rights back. We have Scholar in there, uh, but we truthfully don't have anything all that relevant to uh, pull with it. We could have killed our own Stitcher Supplier, which probably would have been a pretty good idea just to fill in our graveyard here, but we didn't necessarily need to. Uh, again, going to go for red here, naturally. Do want to make sure we've got uh, as much as we can get there. And let's let's go ahead and unburial um, rights. Um, I am going to get the Scholar because what we can do is fill up our yard with some really good stuff, potentially. Uh, I'm going to take Grizzly Salvage. Um, not a super amazing card, I know. That's fine, though, because... Oh, wow, there's the Rise. <laughs> uh, which is great because we do have Mizzix Mastery, so we do have a way to... to do something with that, um, uh, thanks to, to that Mizzix Mastery. That's kind of the nice part about this list, is not only is it reanimating your creatures, uh, but with that Mizzix Mastery, you can really do some damage with some of these really big uh, Rise of the Dark Realms kind of spells, uh, which is fun. I just like it. I like it a lot. Sure. Uh, very interesting. Um, this is a very curious deck that they have put together here. It's very interesting. I don't think I like it, to be brutally honest, but uh, that's okay. Um, all right, so here's the question. Do we just Faithless Looting right now and fill in our yard a little bit, or do we just go for it, uh, given the fact that we have got open mana? Um, or do we just play Urbrask? I mean, that's also an option, uh, and I think a reasonable option. Uh, let's do this. Let's play that Urbrask. Let's go ahead and get that one down. Um, and I'm just going to say no attacks for now. We're, we're going to build the board a little bit here. I kind of want them to try and kill some stuff. They probably don't have many ways to do that. Uh, they could have fight spells. They could have bounce spells. Uh, bounce spells would be way worse, in my opinion. Uh, if they were to fight things off, I kind of don't care. Because um, we're just able to get it back. Uh, okay. Great card, for sure. Um... Let's see what we can do about it. Uh, okay, so if we do this uh, and then Mizzix Mastery, we might actually get a little bit more out of it. So let's do this. Uh, mill three. We want to mill and we also want to drain for two. Okay, there's Elish Norn, which is really solid, actually. Um, let's get you. Uh, and then let's Rise of the Dark Realms. Uh, yep, I would love to cast that spell. There it is. Alright, so that gets rid of both of these little guys, which is great. We also have haste on everything, uh, which is really solid. So we're just going to attack in. Uh, they have a 2-3 to block with. <laughs> um, which is, I mean, probably enough to stay alive? Maybe not. We have, they only have 15 life. Uh, that's so good. Holy crap, that's so good. <laughs> I mean, what do you do against this? You know what I'm saying? Like, they had not left up mana this entire time, which indicated to me that they did not have any kind of, like, interaction spells, I suppose. And so we were freely able to Rise of the Dark Realms in, a, in an instance where they basically had two mana up uh, with m these uh, little pixies, which is good, but not great. Or, or did they even have the two mana up? I don't even think they did. <laughs> All right, there it is. That's three in a row, guys. So let's go ahead. Let's summarize the deck. Let's talk about it for just a minute. 
All right, so as far as reanimator decks go, uh, let's let's talk about this one. I love it. Uh, it seems very, very efficient to me. It seems fairly reliable as well because there's so many big spells that you get to pull back with it. Uh, and again, that point that we talked about, especially in that last game, we're not only able to pull back creatures, but we're also able to pull back these really big game ending kind of spells like we saw in that last game with Rise of the Dark Realms. Excuse me, thanks to Mizzix Mastery. Uh, and so altogether, this deck, it just seems super, super well built. Uh, again, not by me. Uh, it is on Aether Hub uh, and it was absolutely stunning. Like it did the job perfectly. We got that perfect three and record as well. That's always a good feeling. Uh, but man, what a deck, guys. What a deck. So cool. So, so cool. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Please, again, try and make sure you enter that Modern Horizons 2 giveaway. We are giving away a free bundle of Modern Horizons 2. Uh, and so you can enter to win that. That article, again, is at itresolvesmtg.com. Also, all the links are down below, but you can kind of understand how we do our giveaways by uh, checking out that article. But guys, enter those challenge weeks. Make sure you stay tuned because we do have gameplay almost every single weekday. Uh, it's really, really good to be back. I know I was out over the weekend because of uh, my bachelor kind of weekend, but it's really, really good to be back, guys. I miss you all. I hope you have a fantastic Tuesday. I'll see you tomorrow for part two of the challenge week. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I'll see you guys then.